of hot rubber. Highly trained crews can get that hot rubber. Two inches, Remy one inch. Non-trained crews are gonna go with the hot rubber about four to six inches with a two inch overlap. You stay, you stay at least two inches from your, uh, where the hot rubber's overlap. And areas like this with no hot rubber under it, you want to concentrate very thick hot rubber or somebody's coming back with a paintbrush. Literally, a paintbrush in the pail. Lots of them like that. Just lift it up and paint it. Once you do about four or five paintbrush jobs, you're going to be experts. Because you don't want to bend over and do that. <laughs> right? Okay, so. Stop here. Now, what I want is a bucket of hot rubber. And I want you to pour it right uh, pretty well against the curb. All the way down here, and I want it six inches wide minimum, the pour. Okay, so one more pail of hot. We're gonna brush that in, do we need a brush? I'm gonna try this, that squeak is not very good. That one, it's, now for detail work, when you're trying to be fine, this is hard to handle, right? Do something smaller? It's, it's, it's like, it's doing this. Yeah, so what I do is with these things, flat squeegee, you can get them 18 inches wide and 24 inches wide like this. If you can't, then you only get 24 inches wide. I saw cut them. I make it 18 inches wide. And if I'm really tired that day, I'm saw cut them. This wide. That's called the lazy man's sweet. And the reason I do it is because I want to be able to take that hot cover and pour it right there. I want to push it against, and I want the hot rubber to pour over the top of the squeegee. And usually, flat squeegees are much uh, higher. Flat squeegees are higher. All right, so I, push, so I push the hot against it and it pours over. If I can't, I'm going to go to Lowe's and Home Depot and get a deck brush with a handle. Literally, I'm doing this. I'm dipping it, and I'm brushing. Or I'm going to get a whitewash brush, you know, the, not the plastic one either. You know, stand heat. Something, something like that. So this is going to be a little bit tricky for us. Always do what I'm doing. See how I'm trying to I'm going back and forth. It's just a single feel. Slide the board. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. When you have a lot of room to brush, I mean, to do with the squeaking, 
Water test. What if they wanted this water test and you put protection on it? Hey, it's leaking. Really? Where? You never find your leak. Never. So sometimes during a water test, I'll, I'll just cover up the remake. Everything is now black. Do my water test, which is two inches. Some states are 24 hours, some states are 48 hours. And you get the odd engineer that may say, uh, I want three days. Water tests are going out of style. They're useless as far as I'm concerned. Uh, water tests up north, like we just uh, did one in Minnesota, four inches of water. The structure wasn't made to take more than three inches. And nobody questioned the specification. What do you think happened to that water test? Six hours later, I had four inch block of ice. Useless. How can you do a water test? It was, uh, what was it, minus? 20 during that vortex. <laughs> so we yeah. called uh, the uh, LDL, the Vector Electronic Testing Leak Detection Company. And they came out and found three pinholes that I had trouble seeing with a microscope placed over those. They were so accurate compared to a water test with the electronic uh, leak detection that those people provide. 50 times better than any water test. Because the water test might determine that there's a leak. But sometimes water can't go through concrete for a month, right? So your water test is useless anyways, but that leak detection, it's deadly act. You can stick a nail. And what I usually do before the guy shows up, just in case he's a newly trained fella, I stick a nail right through my membrane. Boom. Right? You can't see it because the primer's black, so it's very difficult to see. And then I watch it. Right? Running that electronic thing over. He misses that now. He's off site. I guess somebody else. Okay. So basically, you get all this right. How's the brush working for you? So, what I do with those brushes now, now you don't want to mess up your melter, but literally, a lot of uh, fellas will heat up their melter, take those brushes like all over the ground, and put them right on top. That's, that's what you do, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I do it too. All right, my brand new melter. Yeah. <laughs> a week later, you couldn't tell what color it was. Okay, so for this, <laughs> uh, this is all fine. Uh, now what you would do is you would put, you would have this extending out. And normally, then you start with the, the uh, hot rubber on top, just like you did on the ground. And exactly the same, approximately 10 feet to 17 feet, your protection's going in. So the protection bonds to the hot rubber. Now, in reality, I don't give a shit about protection bonds. It's protection, <laughs> right? I can get it to stick a year later, I come back and put it down a year later. Just let it float. Remember, they're putting a lot of crap in there. The protection is meant for protection, it's not waterproof. So when they say a fully bonded system, it should never mean the protection system unless you've got an asphalt pavement on it. You know, when the cars are putting on the brakes, of course, then you want that protection system bonded. But in this case, there's a lot of overburn. You get the protection in, but take your sweet old time. Don't rush. Just gently put it in. So place your hot rubber out. 
If you're gonna place, uh, what do you got for protection on the side? Power ply, I would take it. Yeah, Normal for Texas. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You only place the protection on the horizontal to start with, and then you would continue on with the vertical. But cut your sheet to fit to fit your style. You know, some guys are trying to wrestle the sheet, bend it up, and trying to tuck it in there. I stop doing that. It's just too hard and get real tired. So for the upturn, cut your sheet. And if it looks like hell, don't worry about it. It's a protection sheet, right? That's all it is. This has to look good. <laughs> That's okay. it. Okay, here we Yeah, that's good. Perfect. <laughs> kind of see why an 18 inch wide squeegee would be helpful in these sessions. Remember, get the squeegee hot before we push it. So I overlap a little bit more, huh? Onto that. I think that's good. Uh, oh, you gonna, gotta feather it out anyway. Yeah, even if the hot rubber is only that wide. As long as you got what's up here to be on the hot underneath us. Yep. Okay. Oh, you got it. You got it. So here, so now you got this much cocky. In reality, you only need that much. That's right. This is for training purposes. In a lot of jobs, you won't see hot rubber sticking out of the end. Lots of jobs. The only time you will see hot rubber pouring out of the protection is when you're using an actual physical cap sheet. Like Supremus cap sheet. So we have a system that you would put a cap sheet down. If you're going to allow this to be exposed for six months, we're waiting for the GC to come back. With it. Obviously. buddy. Be careful with the uh, squeegee, not to cut the fabric, right? Yeah. I don't know if I want to even mention the word notch in the video. Just say don't do it, no notch through See the ridges? The yeah. bottom of the ridge sucks too tight. Este primo, ¿listo? ¿Cuál primo?
Ya cuando caiga ahí. Vamos a montar esto para allá. Oh, so. Are you good? You're good. Rubber 
lawnmower method. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to pull the drain ring off, which is really a clamping ring so that hot rubber is going to go underneath this. There's you're going to grind down the, uh, the edges till, till a quarter inch profile, meaning this sharp edge has to, has to go. Uh, take off some of the rust. You don't have to be too careful when you clamp down with hot rubber on all the rust. It's not going to go anywhere because this, this detail is going to be a little different from what you're normally used to. This drain has been placed too deep into the concrete, so it's got about a two inch depth to it. So what we're going to do, grind the edge off. Take some of the rust off, but, but it'll be twice as fast. You don't need to concentrate on all the rust when you're doing this method. Uh, so I think wipe it. Then what you're going to do is you're, you're going to take this cap, and you're going to take all the tape off. And the problem is with this, is all this garbage has to go. So this is another method. So instead of concentrating on all the rust on there, you would concentrate on all the rust on this thing. So. All this here would have to be cleaned off with an industrial grinder or an industrial wire brush. Then what you're going to do is you're going to prime the concrete with hot rubber primer. That's HRE primer. You're also going to prime the, uh, the steel ring with primer. Anytime you prime steel, you use a rag. Concrete, brush, roller, but steel, always use a rag. So you get the primer translucent, see-through, thin. Uh, but full coverage on metal. Then what you do is you're going to take your hot rubber down. Uh, the, the initial coat of hot rubber goes down first. You take a paintbrush and you coat the ring. Again, the same as the 250. You coat it right down under the horizontal metal. Uh, you're going to take Rime fabric and you're going to cut it. Now Rime will conform to the hot rubber once it gets hot. And you just tuck it in there. Okay? And you just tuck it in. The reme does not have to go all the way down here, the fabric, with this method. So, so you got a layer of hot rubber in here, and you just need to make sure that layer is approximately 180 mils thick. <clears throat> uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, cut a piece of protection, right? Just cut a ring. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be very ugly, but it needs to go under this drainage clamp to protect the hot rubber and you only want to keep the protection on the metal, right? Just where the clamp is going to compress the membrane. Then what you do is you reinstall the uh, clamping ring and you're going to bolt it down. There's four bolts on this particular one. Some have three, some have six. You bolt this down onto the hot rubber, right? And this is cleaned up. Remember, we, we cleaned this, okay? So it would be bolted down. Then what you do is you've got hot rubberized membrane on the massive, uh, massive deck here. You're going to take the hot rubber, the fabric reinforced material, and you're going to actually take the fabric reinforced material. You're going to fill this up with hot rubber, just like you see on uh, pavement in the, on the streets. You know, fill it up. Then you're going to take your fabric reinforced system and you're going to butt it up against this drain. So in other words, what you're going to end up with right here is hot rubber instead of mortar filling up the cavity it's all filled with hot when you're done okay, the great screen's going to go back in and you're going to have hot rubber remember this all gets primed by rag it has to be clean okay. I don't know if I'll be able to... oh. so when you're finished now this is this is a flush drain Okay, so the drain's going to be there. This will all be done with hot rubber right around. So what you've virtually done is you've used the hot rubber as a mortar because normally if you're using a 250GC or a cold applied and you're carrying it down under the clamping ring, you still got to fill this up later with mortar. The mortar has to dry. Then you got to cover up the uh, this mortar with either 250GC or hot rubber later on. And since the 250GC a cold applied, if it was applied out here and you got this mortar, this mortar still has to be waterproof. See what I mean? So you would actually have to take your epoxy and, and place it here because 250GC will bleed into fresh mortar sometimes. So hot rubber, you would just carry the hot rubber from the deck, fill this up, and take the fabric reinforced system right up to the drain body.
That way this drain is completely sealed. Got it? You're just gonna pour it in. That's your new mortar. Plus it's, you just waterproof the drain, top and through the clamping ring. That's it.
Now the next step is to xylene wipe, right? Blow it clean and then xylene wipe. Blow it wipe. Yeah, blow it. Blow, blow, blow it clean. <laughs> xylene wipe. <laughs> so you gotta blow the perimeter. Yep. You guys want to get the blower and, and the drain. from the front. between the uh, metal drain ring interface to the concrete. You can feel it. Trowels, you can't feel it. So this is the way we're going to do it. We're troweling it in first. And the guy with the big old gloves is going to take his hands and he's going to feel that it's actually bonded through there. Right? I can feel the metal interface to the concrete. So I know I'm getting it in there. Right? So one guy is going to take a trowel, the other guy is going to take his gloves. I would not trust a trowel around these bolts because I can't tell if the trowel is actually getting around them. But I can certainly feel with my gloves that it's getting in there. And that's it for that. Okay. Because I'm concentrating with gloves on, I'm actually staring at the work I'm doing, so I can see anything that I missed around these bolts. See, trials won't go around those bolts. You got to use your fingers, right? It's a lot faster too doing it this way. You can be messier, quicker. Why is that called the Canadian mess? Slang. Because in 15 minutes it could be minus 20 degrees zero. You, oh. you want to get off your job fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you understand what I'm doing, right? You see now why we got these bigger bolts? Oh, yeah. You know how I went up. I would have covered up those other bolts. Yeah. It's too slow. So just get it to where you think it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Now this is probably going to be a quarter inch a lot of areas. Hey, who cares? We're here to be effective, not pretty. Okay. Now remember, you want to get the stuff here around the bolts. You don't want it too thick. And I'm going to now take this stuff and I'm going to mash it into the bowl of the drain. All the excess. Okay. Like this. Right down onto the bottom. Right? Just be messy. Trowel, you wouldn't even be halfway done right now. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now take your fingers and get around these bolts. Because remember, you gotta get that drain ring down there. Just wipe it on the concrete. Because remember, we're putting 250 GC out here. So any of the excess, take it off. Just use the concrete as your, uh, to get rid of it. Good. And now the trowel you would use for the outside. Six inches. 
Six inches. Oh, gee. Tell me if that's going to leak. In a hundred years. Those of you younger guys with better eyesight are probably going to end up by your third and fourth grain. You're going to be twice that fast. I really like your gloves. You're just gonna have to give me some of these. You won't have nothing on you. Yeah. 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 How many mills take it? How many mills stick should that be? Uh, 120 minimum. 120? 120 mils minimum. Somebody have a mill gauge? I do. I don't know if we got one that goes to 120 though. No, it goes to 60. And you 80. Do three tests. 80. 80. Every time you use a mill, a wet mill gauge. One, two. The chance of those you landing on two pieces of aggregate are quite, quite high. So. That looks like about 300. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, at least 100. Yeah, he's got one. So we have 120 mil gauge, actually. Okay. Now, before you walk away, just, just picture what we're going to do here. We're going to put a clamp in. We're going to put a uh, steel uh, clamp ring right on top. We don't want the 250GC to impede its ability to rest down. Otherwise, you're going to be torquing this down pretty hard. So, when this is approximately 75 to 85% cured, you're going to put that uh, drain ball ring back in. Okay. You made it? 160. We're good. Is that? About 120 minimum. 120. So Greg, how long how long should this cure? As far as the 250 GC? This might be cured enough by tomorrow, but it's gonna be very it's gonna be sub uh, what is it, under 32 degrees tonight. It's probably gonna take two days. Two days? So we shouldn't come back with the epoxy over this until a couple of days. It's probably 48 hours. Yeah, okay. You guys hear that? Two days. Hours. Probably detail all the drains and then 48 hours before you can put the epoxy on top of that. It's cold. Yeah. yeah. Tonight. Very cold. Okay. Bobby in? Yeah, tomorrow now it's coming back. Good. Okay. So now you gotta remember what's gonna happen. That drain bowl is going back in. It's gonna be bolted down. It's going to be a big old gap around that drain ball. See that? So that gap. It's not coming off. No way. Okay, yeah. I need a picture of that. Yeah. Keep cutting, I want to take a picture of your cut. Pepe, why don't you cut? Why don't you cut? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Look like wind there. Uh, 
Chalky. That I would accept. See that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we need a power one. Yeah. yeah. But I'm still gonna do that to the test. Okay. Like, maybe oh. dirt. Yeah, maybe power one. If it gets like that, that's good. Just remember yeah. what happens with this stuff? The test is 72 hours later by CTSP. But I'll tell you, in three days from now, it's not going to be pretty much better, but not much. Yeah, that's, that's on there pretty good, though, that one. That's on there pretty good. If it's on there like that, you don't worry about it. Maybe just cut it. Just cut, cut it. it. Oh, that. Yeah. See? <laughs> See? I don't know if it's coming this way at all, right? We'll have to cut it. No, no, no. I'm not going to cut it. Up to the no.